Welcome to an example of a hypothesis test of two population means with known population standard deviations. Because we have known population standard deviations, the test statistic is a z-score and we perform a two-sample z-test, not a two-sample t-test. And now let's take a look at our example. We assume independent groups with known population standard deviations. The mean lasting time of two competing floor waxes is to be compared. 20 floors are randomly assigned to test each wax. Both populations have a normal distribution. The data are recorded in table 10.8 below. We have the wax, the sample mean number of months floor wax lasts, and we have the population standard deviation. Does the data indicate that wax one is more effective than wax two, test at a 5% level of significance? Let's begin by listing all of the given information. 20 floors are randomly assigned to test each wax, and therefore the sample size for both waxes is 20, which means n sub 1 is equal to 20, and so is n sub 2, where the subscripts indicate which wax. The sample mean for wax 1 is 3, x bar sub 1 equals 3, the population standard deviation is 0 0.33, sigma sub 1 is equal to 0 0.33. Now looking at wax 2, notice how x bar sub 2 is 2.9, and sigma sub 2 is 0 0.36. Because we are testing at a 5% level of significance, alpha is equal to 0.05. And now let's determine the null and alternative hypotheses. The question is, does the data indicate that wax one is more effective than wax two? If it's more effective, then the sample mean will be greater than the sample mean for wax two. And therefore, the alternative hypothesis is mu sub one is greater than mu sub two. And if mu sub one is not greater than mu sub two, we have mu sub one is less than or equal to mu sub two, which is the null hypothesis. Before we determine the z-score and the p-value using the TID4, let's take a look at this graph shown here above. This is a distribution for x bar sub one and minus x bar sub two. So if there's no difference between the means, the difference is zero, which is why we have zero at the center of the distribution. And now if we find the difference of the sample means, we have three minus 2.9, which is equal to 0.1 which is why we have 0 0.1 marked off here on the horizontal axis. And therefore the p-value is equal to the area under the curve shaded to the right of 0 0.1, which also indicates the p-value is equal to the probability the difference of the means is greater than or equal to 0 0.1. And now let's find the z-score and p-value on the T84. To do this we press stat, right arrow to test. We're performing a two sample z-test, not a t-test because we have known population and standard deviations. We want option three. I've already entered the key information, but let's review it. The input is stats, down. Sigma sub one is 0 0.33, down. Sigma sub two is 0 0.36, down. X bar sub one is three, down. N sub one is 20, down. X bar sub two is 2.9, down. N sub two is 20, down. We're testing to see whether mu sub one is greater than mu sub two, and therefore we select the third option, greater than mu sub two, which is already highlighted. If it wasn't, we would arrow over, press enter. Down, down to calculate, and press enter. The z-score is approximately 0 0.9157. The p-value is approximately 0 0.1799. Let's record this information. Let's take a closer look at this z-score. If we were performing this hypothesis test by hand, we would take the alpha of 0 0.05 and determine the corresponding z-score, which I've already done here. Notice the z-score is 1.645, where the projection region is shaded here to the right. Then by hand, we would compute the z-score using the formula shown here at the bottom of the screen, where again, mu sub one minus mu sub two is assumed to be zero. Notice we get the same z-score we had on the T84 of 0.9157. We'll notice a z-score of 0 0.9157 would be approximately here, outside the rejection region, which means we would not reject the null hypothesis. But let's draw the same conclusion comparing the p-value to alpha. Notice how the p-value is high or greater than alpha, and when the p-value is high, the null must fly, or more formally, because the p-value is greater than alpha, or because alpha is less than the p-value, we do not reject the null hypothesis. Which means at the 5% level of significance from the sample data, 
there is not sufficient evidence to conclude that the mean time wax one lasts is longer than the mean time wax two lasts. I hope you found this helpful.